Okay, we're good to go today. Um, today we are joined in the third episode of our series uh, focusing on small businesses and uh, people who deal with small businesses. Uh, we're joined all the way from Las Vegas, uh, from Cesar Cruz, uh, who is a founder of AGC Commerce. Um, I let Cesar take over um, uh, his site of introduction and then I'll give a brief introduction about Mom and Pop Hub. So Cesar, I'll let you take over. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, my name is Cesar Cruz. Uh, I am the founder and owner of AGC Ecommerce. Uh, what we're about is we like to help small businesses uh, design their websites, uh, either e-commerce side of things, sales funnels, um, you know, just essentially get them online and get the online presence. Uh, we, can't, we can't imagine a better way to help small businesses um, than, you know, do all, do what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that introduction. I think in the current times, e-commerce has suddenly started to be that area where people who were on the fence are realizing this is something where businesses should have hopped on it much earlier. So I would be eager to kind of know about that in a moment. But uh, for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, Mom and Pop Hub is a platform uh, which was launched in uh, April of 2020. And we're focusing exclusively in understanding as well as delivering technology solutions for uh, small businesses. So uh, without further ado, come starting off with each AGC e-commerce. So give us a history of how did you get started with AGC e-commerce and why did you pick up the space of e-commerce um, in this area? And what's your vision and where do you see things evolving in coming time for your company and small businesses? So we started in, uh, I want to say late 2017, uh, actually has a backpack store uh, with a different e-commerce platform. Um, we were selling, you know, we were drop shipping backpacks. I don't know a lot of people uh, probably don't know what drop shipping is, but we were, we were essentially, you know, we found a distributor to, to sell backpacks through and we would be the ones that provide all the ads and everything for, for that company to sell them. And we did very well. Um, during our time doing that, we found a lot of business owners and small business owners needed help with their online presence on uh, the websites, stuff like that. So we, mm -hmm. we got started this chat group and started talking to people and seeing what they needed help with. What, and we, what we came to find out was there was a mass amount of platforms, not just the ones we were using, but there's a mass amount of platforms out there that, that is do it yourself model. And a lot of people have questions. They don't exactly know what they're doing half the time. Um, they just know they have a website and they think, you know, it's automatically going to bring them traffic. Um, right. So we started out, you know, on the consulting kind of side of things, uh, helping them saying, Hey, we can, you know, we're partners with this company partners with that company. We're going to help you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that for you. Uh, that essentially evolved into us designing and building our own platform to help business owners with a live rep, you know, on the other side, if they ever need help um, in every design aspect for the website or e-commerce side or sales funnel side. Okay. So if I may ask, I know there's a lot of things we observe uh, from the top of the funnel where we are more of a brand. We are evolving into helping small businesses with uh, different components of things. But one of the questions we are dealing with e-commerce clients at times is, you know, their perception between Shopify, big commerce, WooCommerce. So is that a kind of question you help them initially uh, in early days to figure out, okay, which platform they need to get into or do you, do you go off your own independent e-commerce platform? Um, initially we did, uh, start with Shopify ourselves. Okay. Um, we didn't not to, not to badmouth them because they're, you know, they're a great company. Um, we just didn't like the design aspect of, uh, okay. the e-commerce side. We, we could, we found out we could, there's very limited as far as building the websites. Um, so we decided, you know, to, to try to find the right, uh, fit for the small business owners that, that were needing help. So, you know, we were partners with every single one, Wix, Shopify, Weebly, Squarespace, uh, BigCommerce, but we eventually evolved into our own platform. Okay, that's awesome. Um, I think that's an area where I have heard a lot of e-commerce shops who join Mom and Pop Hub. And, you know, we have a recent survey which is going on 
where we were trying to understand the pain points of uh, Shopify. And one of the biggest answer we got from these small e-commerce stores is uh, the biggest pain point is, or any ideas of apps they want to get into, uh, they said, we need an app which can get us rid of Shopify completely. And <laughs> there was an element of customization and design when we dug deeper into why they were so not happy with Shopify, uh, which sort of played into that area where they were dissatisfied with the kind of uh, you know, customization they could offer or mm-hmm. it almost required a dev team entirely to be there 24 hours. So, so I think that was certainly something we have learned recently. I think we have started to see a new player groove uh, pages uh, or yes. pages, which is group, sort of- part, group pages. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're, they're a customizable platform as well. Um, yeah. They're very, uh, they're in their beta stages right now. So they're still testing. Um, yeah. I was actually invited to be, uh, <laughs> to be a member so I can check the platform out, which I mean, I, I honestly, they're, they're pretty great. I, I do like what they're working on. Yeah. Um, we're, we're steering away from that side of things where we're, we're uh, more, you know, customization design, aspect of everything with e-commerce yeah no i think that's good to know because that's been an area where i think sometimes because of massive marketing followed by the big players uh we lack uh, experts like yourself who have gone through that journey themselves and are able to say you know what this is the reason you should not be going in this direction or that direction and maybe some of them are still okay initially starting off with Shopify, but uh, I certainly feel like, you know, a lot of small business e-commerce stores initially in their very early days um, don't get the handholding of experts like yourself uh, to have an unbiased way to get that feedback over to them on what's the best uh, two to five year strategy if they were to go into a customized solution like yours, or Shopify side of things. So the marketing power of, you know, these big companies somewhere overpowers their ability to even know there's an option like yours available. So that's great to kind of hear that you have that area you have focused for years. Um, Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm just curious. I think the biggest agenda of these calls ends up being COVID, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think you are in a unique position where you're not just speaking for your business, but also the small businesses you deal with on an everyday basis. So let's start off with just kind of getting a sense how COVID has been on your business, uh, as well as your, um, you know, just overall small businesses you deal with on an everyday basis. So I'll let you take over and help us understand more about that. So when this whole COVID hit, let's say late February, early March, um, you know, we were completely booked up. We had clients left and right uh, needing help, um, you know, contact, contact, contacting us daily. Um, we even were, you know, customizing websites personally for, for some select clients. Um, and then the world seemed to have stopped. Mm-hmm. Everything started shutting down. Uh, people said, you know, stay home, work from home. Obviously, you know, I'm at home um, and we still are at home. Uh, so everything just started revolving around, you know, you need to be at home. You can't, you can't do this. And all of a sudden, all the money stopped yeah. um, as far as small business owners go. And they were kind of freaking out. And, and we tried to, you know, help them out, which, you know, we're going to give you 30 days free. We're going to do this for you. We're going to, you know, not charge a design fee. We're not going to charge. Uh, we're, we're, we eliminated pretty much a lot of fees minus our hosting fees and our, you know, our platform fees uh, to help these business owners out. I had actually one specific client. She, she just had her store built. Um, she worked out of the Caesars palace. She has a forum store in there and the day we delivered the next morning or next afternoon, our governors decided to shut down casinos. Oh, wow. She had no idea what she was going to do. All her stuff was tied up there. Um, so, you know, it, so far it has worked out for her as far as she's able to sell online. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, definitely shifting to all only online is kind of difficult for, for a business owner when they're used to talking to people face to face. Right. So what kind of, I guess there is that very interesting story of, the client you had who was working at Caesar Palace, but 
if you were to look at your overall spectrum clients uh, and maybe those who were prepared with a mix of online and in, in store experiences uh what what would be kind of characteristics of clients you felt like actually went through covid without too much of turbulence in their business models and revenues um i had a lot of uh i, I want to say like pawn shops and stuff like that um they didn't really take too much in effect uh they switched to you know uh in-store pickup or curbside pickup um, some restaurants we have also switched to curbside pickup, uh, you know, online order forms and, and stuff like that. Wasn't really too much affected by it. Um, their, their revenue did drop obviously because they don't have, you know, the clientele sitting in their stores or the restaurants. Sure. No, that makes sense that, you know, some of these stores, uh, businesses were better prepared. Um, I've, I've seen, you know, some of the local restaurants, I'm based out of Memphis, and, you know, they were not initially even on Uber Eats or DoorDash. Mm-hmm. And they made that transition due to COVID, and that sort of helped them to, uh, but there was, you know, a s- obvious, I think, perception, as well as this is a reality that, you know, these delivery services have a great, uh, have a steep uh, markup fee. So they're not always happy with that, you know, area, especially in times like these. So Mm -hmm. absolutely, I think that's an area. Uh, What would be like if you were to kind of talk about some ways these businesses, I I hope it doesn't happen ever again, but if Mm -hmm. we were to hit with a wave two of this pandemic again, uh, or maybe one to two years down the lane, what would be your recommendations to businesses uh, to be ready for uh, this future uh, wave of online or any other you know, way for them to be prepared for these kind of pandemic scenarios? Just honestly be prepared uh, because I honestly believe this is just a version of, of things that unfortunately did, you know, transpire, but there are bigger and better things out there that can and will affect your businesses. Yeah. Um, obviously online is, is where the, the future is moving to, uh, versus brick and mortar. That's the reason why you see, uh, like JC Penney, Sears, Kmart, Target, um, you know, businesses like this close down because they, they, not that they refuse to go with the times, but they, they're not online or they're not, they're not stable enough to go online with their massive inventories or, or whatever the case is with those companies, they're not, they're not stable enough to go online and stay online. Some of them may have websites and stuff, but they are not, they're not doing it the right way. They're not advertising the right way that, you know, shop in store, shop online, shop online is a big, massive thing. I mean, Amazon alone during this pandemic, you know, how many billions of dollars did it gain? You know, and how many, how many more employees did they hire because they're, they're only online, they're strictly online and they're, they're doing a a damage on a lot of small business owners that are, you know, struggling right now Yeah. because everything is online and they ship directly to your door. Yeah. No, I think, um, I mean, it would be fair to say um, there's been a characteristic, which I observed, like you can say JCPenney, Kohl's and, you know, a lot of businesses, Fortune 500 companies they have at par experiences as Amazon. But Mm -hmm. I think there is a, there is a perception from customer point of view on the customer service side of things, as well as speed to market. And that is where Amazon was always, you know, not just speed of delivery. Yeah, um, they were number one. (laughs) Innovation wise, it's not something uh, you can overlook on how Amazon has, you know, revolutionized the whole two-day delivery with Prime, um, their online experiences. So, uh, so I think it's it's certainly like I, everyone can say. You know, all these other players you mentioned, they got there eventually, mm-hmm. but was it too late for them to make up for the losses? That is yeah. the question which you know we sort of feel like sometimes small businesses also, um, you know, with help of uh, people like you who have that expertise, uh, they can match that speed as well as innovation, which the bigger players Mm -hmm. like Amazon offers. And the bigger thing is even with Shopify and other things, you know, that customization and desire 
for the ideal customer experience from what we are hearing is very unique for each and every customer. And so it was learning for us and we are in very early days as a startup that, you know, we evolve one fit all kind of model. But mm. then we learned, okay, well, the brand name of mom and pop hub is so mm. huge that the restaurants are asking us to focus on delivery service. Mm -hmm. um, the e-commerce side of things want us to uh, focus on a certain, you know, let's just take rewards program. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's one of those areas that, um, you know, there is, there is so much of contextual nature of different businesses we have learned since we started and interacted with small businesses that, yeah, it's very difficult to kind of say one business will fit in the model for everything or one model fits everything. So I think that's, that's a valid point that, you know, all these businesses kind of starting off with, um, you know, JC Penny Coles as an example, mm -hmm. along with the customization, which is, I think that personal experience, small businesses always have as an advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. They have to, uh, adjust with the times, uh, you know, be the, the running point, be the customer service, you know, try to give that personalized experience to everybody. Um, cause each person is different, just like each business is different. Yeah, no, I think that's certainly there even with, um, you know, I think we were brainstorming certain delivery service, which, you know, we talk about delivery services, there's thousands of there, but the mm -hmm. more we sat down with restaurants, understood like the very first impression they said was no we don't want another delivery <laughs> service coming to us we're tired uh -huh. you know we sat down understood why they're so like they use it but why are they against it to the level uh, mm -hmm. where they are and bottom line was the kind of uh, you know cuts they are coming with in their revenue that kind of puts them at a very difficult spot so uh, so, yeah, I think that's certainly, you know, when you get that mix of, um, I, it was a big learning for us on how to have a mix of personalization in our platform. And that's what is informing us in future versus uh, keeping everything same for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious, uh, what's been, uh, you know, a few areas you spoke about, um, you know, and I, maybe this is something which we have already covered, uh, but you are very in-depth into the technology space, just like we are. Uh, what kind of recommendation or trends are you seeing uh, when you have a client who is now coming in and saying, hey, we, Caesar, we need to kind of get your help to transition a completely in-person experience to online experience, are there some trends you're seeing which can kind of benefit our audience to know that, hey, as small business owners, these are top items we need to look out for as we make that transition to the online experiences? Uh, one big trend, I mean, everybody's been talking about it for years, is uh, SEO. Um, you know, how am I going to be found? Uh, how my web, how's my website going to perform? right off the bat, um, a lot of the trends come, or how should I say stem from the SEO side of things. Um, they think, you know, I just built a brand new website. I'm going to have a million customers come into me. Right. So my, my, one of my biggest jobs is when I design sites and, and help people or help them with their own website when they're designing it is, is, you know, don't expect a million dollars to come the very next day. Sure. Um, the, the biggest trend that's happening now is drag and drop. So with SEO, drag and drop, everybody gets confused. They don't, you know, know all the technical terms for everything. Um, our builder has been drag and drop from the start. So, and as, it's very SEO friendly, but you know, there's a lot of things you got to do at the same time. Um, whether it's, you know, Google My Business is, is, is getting exposure, you know, getting listed on many business websites, um, getting listed on mom and pop, uh, you know, getting listed everywhere you can so you can have that online presence. So that way, you know, when you do the job right, you get it done and it get and it happens, um, you know, not necessarily only customers the very next day, but you know, at least one, two, three, and then starts going up from there. And, and, you know, getting publications out there, you know, there's a lot of things that go on into building a site and make sure that you, uh, that the trend, that you're trending in a way yeah. yourself. 
So, yeah, I guess the biggest point is that they need to kind of have realistic expectations and uh, slowly, gradually build that, um, you know, customer base rather than expecting just because you're live on a a search engine, you are ready to flow Mm -hmm. in all the customers to your page. Um, That's right. There is, you know, I think um, you are coming from a very unique experience with drop shipping as well as, um, you know, now you're talking about drag and drop Shopify experience. Now you just mentioned about SEO uh, side of things. Um, Sometimes when I'm talking to business owners who are transitioning or thinking about this e-commerce adoption now, uh, they are having a perception that no matter how much money they put in, they will never be able to compete with the Amazon-like network. And the product they might be selling, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Amazon, like we say in SEO, is always going to have a rank zero. So, um, so how do you uh, convince or, or how would you want a small business owner to think when they have this perception that the big players have the big million dollar budgets in order to keep that top ranking, uh, even the organic side on the SEO side. Uh, so how do you think a small business can feel less intimidated by the big mm-hmm. players in that space? So it's definitely scary, you know, look, thinking about when you think about eBay, Amazon, um, you know, the big dogs in the game. Um, but they, they, they forget that um, those big dogs are also targeting worldwide. They're in every state, every country, every city, everywhere. Uh, but they are not necessarily ranking number one in every single aspect. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're selling, target local okay. and grow from there. So, so let's say you're selling like, for example, I, I sold backpacks for quite a while. So what I did is I targeted, you know, 20 miles. 30 miles, 40 miles. Then eventually I started seeing my ranking go up and I started seeing that I was organically ranking, you know, number seven, number six, and then number, I think I finished off at one uh, in in local, you know, and and that's when I started expanding, you know, to another state and start working my way up from there as well. It is just because Amazon is Amazon and it has like a conglomerate on things and they produce their own products doesn't mean that small businesses are going to go away. Because small businesses was what kept America alive for yeah. so long, and it's going to continue to keep them alive. Right. Well, I think that's a very good point. You know, we had statistics which sort of, you know, was the initial vision of our company that uh, the small businesses employ seventy to eighty percent of the workforce at the end of the day. And you know, we were talking to a. Uh, aggregator who is into optical space yesterday and you know we had a similar session our second session and uh, they spoke about the fact that you know customers on their end also don't have to always look at the pricing as the only Mm -hmm. factor and when it comes to small businesses uh, employee with a small business gets emotional investment as well as you know trainings and other things Uh, which a small business owner cares about. So when a customer spends uh, with a small business, they're not just, you know, caring about the bottom line price. They're caring Mm -hmm. about investing in their community. And that's, you know, one of the reason even we evolved as a platform that a lot of places we are having that noise of large corporations. How do we get into that space where we say this is exclusive to small businesses. There's nothing uh, we need to worry about having the larger corporations on our platform. And so Mm -hmm. uh, that's been, you know, the brand and somehow that's, uh, that's certainly an area which has resonated with businesses, but it's a very good point you raised. And I honestly didn't think even I had that much expertise in that area to uh, speak knowledgeably, but how they can actually um, compete with Amazon's like, uh, you know, players without necessarily, um, I think we lost your video, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, but we had the Amazon like players and how they can start locally and then expand their region across. That's a big area, which I don't think 
small businesses always get that uh, thought process in their initial days as they're adopting. So I'm glad that you have your, you know, personal experience, which you have sort of gone through in that backpack journey you had with the drop shipping model, which, uh, you know, I think sometimes uh, businesses find it easy to relate to when somebody has gone through that model. Um, I think we're probably at the end of it. One area I'm interested to kind of hear, and I always like we talk about small businesses and their impact on community. Um, and of course, this is a tough time, you know, that a lot of lives have been lost and all of us are, you know, praying that we get over the hump and get back to normal life. Uh, mm-hmm. But in these times also, we have sometimes, you know, seen examples uh, where small businesses are still investing in their local community uh, mm-hmm. by philanthropic efforts. So uh, do you have anything you can remember as an example recently, mm-hmm. which gives an inspiration to others with that very theme that no matter what the time is, a small business can invest in their local community? Uh, so like one of the things we're doing is uh, we're, there's a hashtag out there that says, you know, support, support small business, small, uh, support small local businesses. Um, so I see a lot of these business owners saying, you know, hey, you know, this is what I offer. Um, just post the link on your social media saying, you know, what you sell. Don't put no prices or nothing. And they just, you know, share with as many business owners. So, you know, we decided that was, you know, that was a really good idea. So we want to, you know, we ourselves want to help small business owners. So we, we, we constantly post on there, you know, hey, this is, this is for only business owners. You know, this is what we do, but go ahead and put your link, you know, go ahead and share, go ahead and like it so we can get as many business owners involved. And when, when enough people are involved, somebody's going to see it. Somebody's going to say, Hey, you know, this, is, uh, I need something like, let's say carpet or carpet cleaning or car repair, or, you know, I, I need a website builder or I need mm-hmm. something. All that's going to, you know, take in fact, because, you know, that's, that's showing Facebook that it's a popular post. So it's going to start popping up everywhere on every business page yeah. on every, every, you know, client's page. They're going to be like, Oh, okay. And it's going to get bigger and bigger. And that's, that's ultimately what it's all about. It's just helping the business owners that are, you know, small and local or even medium size that, that need help right now in this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. I think, they have taken care of our communities and, you know, they have sort of taken them been there for us. And that's, you know, something we need to return back. Um, and that's encouraging to see that, you know, the social media space is an area which, you know, not all of us are very good at understanding how to use it in these times. And uh, we do see those hashtags, you know, coming up a lot. But it's very good to hear from you on what is the overall journey of those hashtags, because many a times, you know, I speak to them, uh, the small business owners who are maybe not as, um, you know, aware of the technology side and they see the social media patterns as more of, hey, these are kids doing things. They don't really impact mm-hmm. much of bottom line. Yeah. So. No, definitely these hashtags help uh, business owners out, um, you know, just being seen. Some, some people don't even know that, you know, they have a, a vegan restaurant right down the street. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We had this call, I was saying, there's a optical business, which is an aggregator of opticals near me. And one of the biggest, you know, I had a laugh at this where um, her name is Charlene. And she mentioned about how she was having a chat with some of her friends in the community because she encourages these businesses to get into um, the optical shops, which are the true mom and pop independently Mm -hmm. owned optical shops. But then she was speaking to her friends and she was like, Hey, do you shop at local and independently owned? And everybody was like, yeah, we go to vision works. We go to this place. Mm -hmm. Other things. Like there was, there was almost a revelation that, and it's nothing bad, you know, everybody employs people and we want everybody to prosper, but Mm -hmm. there is almost a lack of awareness. And when you mentioned that vegan example, that sometimes customers even find it difficult to know, am I going to a chain Mm -hmm. or large corporation or am I going to an independently owned mom and pop shop or a small business? And you know, that's certainly with things like those hashtags, um, you know, I think uh, need to kind of make sure we are, you know, encouraging and having awareness 
towards who are those independently owned small businesses. Um, Caesar, I know this is Sunday, but this was such a great chat to kind of learn about everything. Uh, you are certainly leading the way with, you know, a lot of, um, you know, work you have done with e-commerce uh, throughout your career and helping a lot of clients with this transition. Um, I'll have a separate discussion with you in a moment uh, uh, about a few things I want to know look more about your business model. But uh, for our audience, I wanted to thank you for your time and giving us opportunity to talk to you on a Sunday. Um, I hope uh, you know we get to learn more from you and see more of you know small business independent shops coming to you to get the help they need as a transition and stay adapted to this e-commerce side of things. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.